All right, so here is, this is Brenda at Handwork Maniac. I think I forgot to say that on my other video, sorry. Um, I am Handwork Maniac on YouTube and also on Instagram. My Instagram account is only for cross stitch and I have a hard time remembering posting my pictures to that. I'll try and do better. Uh, my husband is gonna come home halfway through this video, but I need to get it done, so we'll just work with that. Maybe you'll get to see him since we didn't have him on the stocking report. All right. This is a whip parade of all my whips, and I'm going to use my, I made a list in my Hydro journal on New Year's Eve, like I told you in my last video, and I actually listed them in chronological order of how old they were. So my oldest whip is Victorian, is, no, I keep calling it the wrong thing, is Heirloom Christmas Sampler by the Victoria Sampler. The front of it is a version in kind of pinks and teals. There's also a version that's red and green, and I did the red and green version. You can also do a shorter version. This is, I decided to do the whole long thing. I started this, I actually wrote the date of all of my whips on the magnet of when I started them. Why did I not think of that earlier? I don't know. So I started this. These are the, okay, the first four are the ones that are in craft prison over here on the side. These sideways ones are the craft prison ones. And since my last video, I have been thinking about these and what I can do to get them out of craft prison. So, you'll hear my ideas about that. Oh, and Victoria Christmas was started November of 2003. So this is definitely my oldest whip. This is what it looks like. The, the tree was was probably the hardest, one of the hardest parts because it was, it's all backstitch in green. So it's just, it's not hard. It's just hard to figure out where you are, to keep track of where you are. And then it has some ribbon embroidery flowers on it and some beads. It's beautiful. I love it. And then it has this pulled work. I don't know if you can see my fingers behind there, so you can tell that's pulled work. You actually cut the thread in the middle right here, then you unweave it, and then you unweave the thread above it, and then weave that one back in. I can't even remember now exactly. And then these vertical threads, that you do that for several rows, and then these vertical threads that are left, you weave in, in and out of them to make a pattern. And that's the part where I keep thinking, I don't want to do any more of that. I, that is tedious. It's not really hard. It's just tedious and I don't enjoy it. And so I don't want to pull it out and finish it. But what I was thinking is I either ought to just do it, get up the energy and just do it, or I could just skip those. There's a couple more pulled bands. I could just skip those and do the rest. It does have hard anger at the bottom down here, which I do not mind hard anger. For some reason, that cutting is not as hard for me as this pulled work. So I may, I just need to finish it. Skip the pulled work and just finish it and do the hard anger at the bottom so it can be done. So it can get out of craft prison. It's been in there forever, ever. All right, that's my oldest. Whip, my, and the funniest thing is the four oldest whips. No, I guess not. Some of my oldest whips are the ones that are in craft prison. How funny is that? Okay, second oldest whip is Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater, which is a Heaven and Earth Designs. Or I guess the second one in craft prison, it's not the oldest. I started this in April of 2007 was when I first discovered Heaven of Designs. This uh, is artwork is by Scott Gust Gustafson, who does a lot of fairy tales, I love them. Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater having tea with Mr. and Mrs. Mouse in a pumpkin. I love it. But I'm still, I've done two pages and I'm still up here in the wood and that is my husband. Just opened the garage door. So this is how much I have done. But about a year and a half ago, I found another Heaven and Earth design that I love. Oh, just as Steph would say, dead on the floor when I saw it. Dead on the floor. I was just like, I, I have to do that. So when I started that one, I, 
I know that will take me the rest of my life, and I, I don't know if I'll ever come back to this one. Um, Catherine's probably going to inherit it and decide whether she's either going to have, or, or Marie, whether she's going to save the floss and throw it away or finish it, maybe. And you'll see the other heaven and earth later. Would you like to say hello? <laughs> As you walk by? Which way are you going? The, <laughs> the stairs I doesn't want to say hello. Uh, all right, the next one in Craft Prison is Signs of Spring, which was a class that I took as part of the old Swan Sampler Guild in 2009 from Diane Clements. This is the piece. It has this reticello section down here at the bottom. It is all done except for this down here and uh, some gold work up here that you can't do until the very end because you can't squish it or anything. We did a piece in, as part of the class, we did a practice piece of that reticello. Um, you actually cut this whole piece of fabric out, you do all this finish work around the edge, the right edge of the fabric, and then you pull, you weave these threads through and then do some knots on them like macrame to make this beautiful pattern. It is hard, tedious, I'll probably never do it again. And that's what's stopping me on this project is I don't want to do this again at the bottom of the finished piece. So let me show it to you. Upside down. Has several specialty stitches in it. I think those, yep, those flowers are queen stitch. Some white work down here. And then the hole for the reticello, which the other in the middle of the night the other day it occurred to me, why don't I cut this? This has just a little bit more to finish. This part right here is not done yet, and I don't think this is, but it's very close. Why don't I cut this out and tack it behind this hole? I think that that would totally work. And then this could be done, and I wouldn't have to do it again. So that's my brilliant idea on how to get that one out of craft prison. Diane Clements has, has since passed away, so that was very sad. Um, oh, and then the EGA basic sewing kit is the last one in craft prison. I used to attend the meetings for our, our local EGA chapter. They're in Salt Lake, so they're about a 45 minute drive from me. And when I started working back to work full time again about eight years ago, I just don't have the energy to go to those meetings anymore. So I haven't been for several years. But one year we had decided that we were going to make a basic sewing kit and every piece of the, you know, each little small that was part of the sewing kit would be a different technique. So we could learn all these different embroidery techniques. So the first thing we did was made the lid. This is a piece of sheet metal because I wanted to be able to put magnets on the back, store magnets on the back. Um, so I collected all these fabrics that go together. I stitched this front piece with B for Brenda. I glued these ribbons in when I finished, when I put the cording on so I could tie them to the top of this basket so it would make a lid. And I glued these ribbons in before I put it together so I could, I haven't decided yet how it will attach in the front. And then the first month was this little, I believe this is called a CC, where you stitch all the background and then the actual object is just some back stitching. Each piece has a scripture on it. The front of this says, there is no other name, which is a scripture out of the Book of Mormon. Also has my name and the year on the front. This also has my name at the top, and then it says, Go ye now in peace, which is from the New Testament, Mark. It's the scripture. Those were ones I just chose to put on there. And then the inside is like a, like little pockets. And then there's a scissor bob that goes with that. It's um, an acorn on the back, a CC. 
I'm going to be on the front and my nose beads. I'm coordinating colors for my box. Button. And then that was as far as I got. And the rest of the techniques, you know, there's a hard anger piece. There's a, I can't even remember what all of them were, but I wasn't, I'm not um, very interested in doing those other techniques. So I stopped working on this. So I think I should just finish it. Decide, oh, I did do one more. I forgot. This is the needle roll. It's a pin cushion. The sun is just, if you can see that yellow, those yellow flowers. This is black work or red work. This is actually brown work. I do not like black work, red work. It's not hard, I just don't like it. And then it has emery in this end and just squishy fiber fill in this end. It's a pin cushion. So I just need, I'm thinking I should just finish this box with doing cross stitch, stuff that I like, to finish the rest of the objects. Um, the other stuff in this box is my EGA name tag. This was my name tag for the regional Rocky Mountain Region Conference in 2010. This was a little pouch I got at the one Sampler Guild retreat in Cedar City when we saw the Shakespeare Festival. So those are all in here. So I just need to finish that project. All right, Kurumi. I have done a couple, it's a canvas piece. I have done a couple of canvas pieces. This is the only one that I haven't ever finished. This was the class I took at the region, Rocky Mountain Region Conference seminar. It is on canvas. It's by Anne Streit Kurz, K-U-R-Z. Her last name is hyphenated, Streit, S-T-R-I-T-E dash Kurz, K-U-R-Z. Here is the, what the finished design will look like. Her hair is black felt that's tacked on and her face is white felt that's tacked on, or fabric. But the rest of it is canvas stitches. And even the whole background is stitched. I love canvas work. It does have to be on stretcher bars, so it's not very portable, and I kind of need it on a floor frame. I can work on it on my lap frame at a table. If I put a frame weight on the bottom to hold it steady. But my back doesn't like stitching sitting in a hard chair at a table. But here is some of the beautiful stitching that I've done on it. This particular, you can do a, a painted canvas and then you choose different stitches to fill in each section. This canvas type is where you, she drew the pattern on the canvas before class. So this was already drawn and you're filling in the different sections with different stitches. I love, like this dark green is a velvet cord that's couched on top, but otherwise it's just, it's easy stitches. You know, you're just doing a satin stitch over so many threads or over a little next to each other in different colors to make these beautiful patterns. I love it. I need to do, figure out when I can work on this. It takes a little bit of brain power. It's hard to do at night after work, but that's where I am on Kirumi. Started that at, like I said, the Rocky Mountain Region Seminar in 20, it's on my magnet board, I have to look. 2010. All right, next oldest whip is in French. Because I've already done this video once, now it's this huge mess. All right, I need your help on this piece. This was a piece that was available online for free. Someone told me about it several years ago, I don't remember who. This is what it is in French. And that uh, bottom name is, I think, um, who had a link to it to find it. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the link was or where the pattern was available. This is what it looks like. When finished, I believe this is 18th century um, style. I love it. 
Catherine actually took this home and worked on it one year for Mother's Day, Christmas, or birthday, Mother's Day. The batter, the border is complicated and not, well, it's all cross stitch, but you know, a little more in depth than your normal border, but it is repetitive. So it's, I don't like repetitive as you know, and I don't like borders cause they're repetitive, but she took it home and worked on it and finished this, all this border over here for me. And she got down to here and ran out of floss. And I had put some extra floss in there, but she ran out of the original skein that I had in there. This calls for, the pattern calls for the original greens that it called for were these very uh, browny tan greens, 831 and 371. And I didn't like those, so I switched the greens out when I started it to be 470 and and 471, I believe. Yes. So Catherine ran out of that original skein of floss and started stitching with the other floss that I had bought because I knew it was going to take several skeins. And she said, Mom, the floss you have in here is not the same color as your original skein. So this is one of those ones where DMC changed their dye lot. So the skein we started with was an old one out of my stash and then the ones I had bought were a different dye lot. So I was kind of waiting to see if I could find any more in my stash old colors. I haven't been able to. I haven't worked on this for several years for that reason. I know that if I change to the new floss, I'll be able to tell in that border. So if any of you have, and I believe it's this darker color, I think it's the 470 that's causing the problem. If you have old 470 or 471, I guess, I'm not sure on that one, in your stash that you'd be willing to sell me that was before the dye lot change, I would love to buy it from you for even way more than a DMC floss costs now. It's worth it to me to be able to finish this beautiful piece. My email address is always in the notes below my videos, so please contact me. I would love to work on that piece. I'm not sure how many more skeins I would need. I don't know, four or five maybe. We keep thinking about different things we could do. We could just stitch it and not care. I don't know. <laughs> uh. Okay, the next oldest is the American Sampler by Sandy Orton. That looks like this. This is on 40 count, 36 count pair by Lakeside Linens. Um, it has a lot of specialty stitches in it. These, this flower and this flower and this flower and these strawberries are all queen stitches, little tiny queen stitches. Um, this background green is a rice stitch. No, not rice. Alternating half stitches, I can't remember what it's called. There is a white thread back here that's weaving in and out on every line behind this lettering to make that look. Um, this little guy, and there's a woman over here that matches, Colonial Man and Woman, is over one with a tenth stitch. This heart is a satin stitch. Another one that I kind of need to work on during the daylight hours, not daytime brain hours, not nighttime brain hours. I believe you can buy it in a separate leaflet now. It was originally in Cross Stitch and Needlework Magazine, March of 2011. And the designer's name is Sandy Orton. And it's called American Sampler by Sandy Orton. This version is on a light gray, I think. I loved it on the green, so I decided to do it on green. And it is stitched with all Averasois silks. And they are beautiful, beautiful colors. All right, moving on. Ah, another French one that translates to French bird houses.
by Mon Ami, a Mon Ami Pierre. Here it is in the blue, with a blue background fabric. Here it is with a tan green. I'm gonna have to stop this video, hang on.